The Lone Ranger is perhaps the most attractive figure ever to come out of the West. Through his daring, his riding, and his shooting, this mysterious rider won the respect of the entire Golden Coast, the West of the old days, where every man carried his heart on his sleeve and only the fittest remained to make history. Many are the stories that are told by the light of the Western campfire concerning this romantic figure. Some thought he was on the side of the outlaw, but many learned that he was a lone rider, dealing with justice for the law-abiding citizenry. Though the Lone Ranger was known in seven states, he earned his greatest reputation in Texas. None knew where he came from, and none knew where he went. On a fiery horse with the speed of lightning, a cloud of dust and a hearty yell, that's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Hi ho silver, away! In response to hundreds of listeners, this program is special. The origin of the Lone Ranger. How he met Tonto, how he got his name, and how the Lone Ranger found the great horse, Silver. This is a story of a man who's buried his identity to dedicate his life to the service of humanity and to country. It is the story of an American heritage, the story of the Lone Ranger. Six men guided their horses along the canyon floor towards the hideout of the Cavendish Gang. The strongest, most ruthless gang in all of the West. The six were undismayed by the heavy odds against them because they were Texas Rangers. Rain in, boys. Oh. Girl. We'll wait here until the scout returns. Are, are you sure that's a good idea to send Colin on ahead? Can we trust him? Little brother... I know you just came down to help, but this place is different than your college. Trust is all we really have around here. We gotta know if Butch Cavendish has learned that we're heading over to his hideout. Collins has been stationed over this way for the longest, so it's only logical. Got it? Well, you are the captain. Forget about that for a moment. I want to speak to you, brother to brother. My wife and son are coming up from the east. Something happened to me and you survive, well... I, I know you'll take care of Danny. Yeah, you know I will. I mean it. If I don't survive, I'm going to count on you to resign from the Rangers and work that silver mine we staked out. Use my shares to raise my son, your nephew. Okay, okay. And if I don't make it, buy me a dog and feed it for me. Scout train coming. <clears throat> What's the word, Collins? Good news, Captain Reed. It's all clear. I scouted the rim on both sides of the canyon and found no sign of the Cavendish outfit. Excellent. All right, boys. Let's go get Cavendish. Yeah. The guy named Collins remained behind as the rangers moved in single file along the floor of the rock-strewn canyon. They didn't know that Collins had lied, that Butch Cavendish and his killers were waiting on the rim of that ravine. Now listen, we'll hold our fire until they're right below. The man on the other side of the canyon will start shooting when we do. We'll have those rangers trapped between us. Right, boss. That's a good idea, boss. We'll have to shoot straight. Be sure to get all six of those men. We can't get down to the floor of the canyon without going all the way back to the hideout. And it'll be dark in half an hour, so don't take chances. When a man goes down, keep on pouring lead into him till you're sure he's dead. Now get ready. All right, man, fire!
Several hits were scored against the Rangers in the open volley from the outlaws. The Rangers were hurt, but not dead. The six Rangers swung from their saddle and spread out as they returned the fire from both sides of the canyon. They hugged the ground, taking advantage of the meager protection afforded by small rocks. Then, one of the guns was silent, but five returned the deadly fire from above. The Reed brothers fell back to back, fighting side by side, while bullets from the brim of the canyon poured down into the rocks and sand beside them. Double-crossed. If we get out of this, we've got a score to settle with that blasted Collins. Johnny and two guns are down. Jackson's been hit. It's just... Ah! You're hit. It's good. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I can still fight. But your arm, you've... Uh, Dan! Rifleman, I got him! I, I hate rifles. Da Dan? Dan, how about are you hit? Dan? How many left? I, I don't know. I, I think it's just us. No, no. It's just you, brother. I, I'm out. R remember that promise. Don't you dare forget Danny. The outlaws on the rim grew bolder when they saw that there was but one gun firing from the canyon floor. Then that gun, too, went silent. Twilight deepened into darkness, relieved by the cold light of a full moon, and then another figure moved along the still bodies. It was a native, clad in a jacket of fringed buckskin. He examined the men for whom heroic deeds had been a part of each day's work. Hmm. Dead. Five times the native found a man whose soul had gone to join the immortals. When he came to the sixth, he found what Collins had failed to discover before the outlaws left. He found a faint spark of life still burning. The native lifted this man tenderly in his strong arms and carried him away. The wounded man was taken to a nearby cave where the native man bathed and dressed the wounds as best he could. Then he took a spade from one side of the cave and returned to the canyon where he worked steadily until the dead men had been buried as per their customs. Returning to the cave, he sat watching, listening periodically to the faint beat of a gallant heart through the remaining hours of the night. Daybreak found that heartbeat stronger, but by nightfall, a new enemy assailed the ranger. The wounds had become infected and there was fever. The native called on all the lore he knew and went through two days and nights without rest in a valiant effort to combat the all-consuming fever that threatened to kill where outlaws' guns had failed. It was daybreak when Ranger opened his eyes, and for the first time, the native saw them, clear and calm. You wake? Yeah, but... So weak. Wounded bad. I remember... I remember an ambush. That right. Found you in Canyon. Carry you here. Cave? That right. Oh, good. Thought it was hell for a second. That daylight over there? It morning. Damn it. I was out all night? Four nights since fight. There's... Some familiar about you, friend. I am Tonto. Strange coincidence? When I was a boy, I helped out a Tonto. Small territory, Kimusabe. Kimusabe? That's what you called me years ago. Called me Kimusabe. I am sure that is exactly how I say. Uh, what's it mean? In my language, sneaky scout. Your tongue, though? We will say... Wrong brother. Tonto. Six of us went into that canyon. If there's any... No, you are only ranger who come out of canyon. Damn. One of them was... Was my brother. 
I am sorry. You are only one left now. You are Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. The only one who knows about that game. I'm going to get every one of those crooks. I'm going to carry on that war. For every one of the men who died, a hundred crooks are going to feel the weight of justice. I'll make sure every criminal in the new frontier regrets the day you found a dying ranger and nursed him back to life. As soon as I'm strong enough to carry guns, I'll be the Lone Ranger. Tonto was amazed at the sudden strength that seemed to surge through the wounded man. He seemed to be transformed by some strange alchemy into the composite of all six ranges. In his eyes, there was a light that must have burned in the eyes of knights in armor, a light that, through the ages, lifted the souls of strong men who fought for justice. You do that. After you rest a little more. Yeah. Tonto, that gang will know me by sight. They know one ranger escaped, and they'll be looking for me. You... you should... They do not know you live, Kimusabe. I bury five men, made six mounts. Outlaws think six men dead. Then my identity shall be forever buried with my brother and my friends. From now on, my... my face must be concealed by a mask or, or a disguise. You stay down five... six... six days. Get strength back. Uh, Tonto, while we go after the Cavendish gang, we got to watch for a little boy and his mother who are coming from the east. We've got to get to a silver mine. Silver mine? Yeah, a secret one. I know an old man I can trust. He used to be a ranger. He'll stay at the mine and work it just enough to supply the cash we'll need. So, so much to do. So much. Rest now, Kimusabe. Rest a while. Then we talk. Several weeks have elapsed since the massacre in Brian's Gap. The ranger whom Tonto had rescued had regained his strength and ridden with an old man into a remote section of the hills, where a small shack concealed the entrance to a silver mine. So, this is the shack you and your brother built, huh? Yes, Jim. This is where you'll have to live and work. Sure sorry to hear about the death for your brother. He was a fine man. Didn't he have a little boy? Yes, Jim. Now that my brother's gone, half of this silver mine belongs to his son. Where's that boy now? I don't know, but I've got to find him. I hope I can be as much to him as my brother was to me. Well, you and that boy will be pretty well fixed with this here silver mine. All I want out of it is enough for my immediate needs. You may have the rest of my share. Oh, no, I don't need that. It's all right, Jim. You're entitled to it. You'll have to do all the work. And remember, you're never to reveal the fact that I have any connection with this silver mine. I have nothing to do with it. To all intent and purposes, it belongs to you. Well, I suppose I could refine a little ore right here in this here shack. That's exactly what I want you to do, Jim. I'll come here when I need money or bullets. B bullets? Yes, I want some of the ore cast into silver bullets. Thunderation! Lead bullets are good enough to get revenge against the Cavendish gang. I'll not use the bullets for revenge, Jim. I want them to be a symbol of justice, by the spirit of the law. I want those who see them to be reminded that sooner or later, every criminal will be defeated. The best kind of justice, huh? Yes. I made my plans carefully, Jim. 
I'm sure I'm right. So, when you're starting out? As soon as Tonto arrives with strong horses. During the next few days, the man who had become the Lone Ranger helped his old friend bring ore from the tunnel and refined it into the purest silver, which was cast into bullets that studded a heavy gun belt. In the meantime, he made a mask to cover the upper portion of his face. Then Tonto returned with strong horses and bad news. Outlaw gangs and war parties make raid on wagons coming from the east. All wagons burned and all people killed. Tonto, my brother's wife and son were coming from the east on that wagon train. Was there anything? I found a trunk. A trunk? Hmm. Copper plate on trunk. I bring it here to show you. There. Name on plate. Read. My brother's trunk. Tonto, was there... Does anybody know if there was a little boy on the caravan? Do not know. Well, no time like the present. Hit the saddle, Tonto. We have a lot to do. I guess I'll just keep an eye on things here. And keep a rack of silver bullets on hand. Yeah. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments to give our shout out to another podcast we love in what we are sort of calling our Not an Ad Shout Out. The Lone Ranger may be a fantastic fiction of the frontier, so we only find it fitting that this shout out goes to Legends of the Old West from Black Barrel Media. Legends of the Old West are stories from the Wild West told in a new way. Hear the tales of lawmen like Wyatt Earp, Wild Bill Hickok, and the Texas Rangers, outlaws like Jesse James, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Native American leaders like Red Cloud, Sitting Bull, and Crazy Horse, and rowdy towns like Deadwood, Tombstone, and Dodge City. Hosted by Chris Wimmer, this show brings alive the Old West in all its glory, with a magnificent music and sound design. So, look up Legends of the Old West on all major podcast platforms, or go to their website at blackbarrelmedia.com to see their entire selection of truly outstanding shows. With that out of the way, let us continue the origins of the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger quickly captured several members of the Cavendish gang. Others knew that they were hunted men. They scattered and fled in all directions, but the masked man maintained a relentless pursuit one after another. The trails led through several states. Collins, the faithless scout, was run to earth in Laramie. His pal was caught in Julesburg, and another of the killers was turned over to Lawn Cheyenne. Months had gone by since the masked man had started his mission, Butch Cavendish himself was the only member of the gang who remained at large. He knew that he was hunted. He knew that his mass nemesis could be stopped only by death. On one occasion, the Lone Ranger had come close, but Cavendish owned the faster horse. He got away, but his escape was only temporary. With Tonto at his side... The masked man pressed on until the trail was new and sharp. We are close to Cavendish now, Kimbo Sabe. Yes, he can't be far now. He outrun us last time. Maybe better to shoot on sight. No, Tonto. I want to take him alive. I want to see... <laughs> I'm fine. Over there. Ride him out. Hurry, white fella. Once more, the superior speed of the outlaw's horse carried Cavendish to safety. When Tonto returned from the feudal chase, the masked man stood beside his dead horse. He was a good horse, Tonto. Loyal, faithful, and brave. But my next horse must be faster. I just wish that... Tonto, we've heard stories of a wild horse, a fiery white stallion. Hmm. He was last seen near the valley, miles away. 
over that way. Yeah, Cavendish went that way. We'll be on the lookout for the wild horse as well as a man. Tonto's horse carried the Lone Ranger's saddle and supplies, while the masked man and the native continued along the outlaw's trail with dogged perseverance. In the meantime, a fiery white stallion, the king of Wild Horse Valley, had left the green hills to seek adventures in the outer world. He met a buffalo, a shaggy monster of tremendous size and strength, whose evil eyes burned with a lust for murder as he challenged the White One to battle. <laughs> it was a fight of earth-shaken fury. The sun flashed from the sleek body of the White One as he dodged and sidestepped charge after charge then reared high to strike at the infuriated adversary. He was nimble and courageous, but his strength began to wane as the battle went on. The buffalo charged again and again. The splendid muscles of the white one were slower in responding, and then too slow. He was caught by the shaggy monster's charge. Wet crimson stained his pure white coat. Another charge. The white one saw it coming and he couldn't dodge. He staggered and fell. The monster drew back. His head was lowered as he pawed the ground, in readiness for the charge that would drive his bull horns deep within the white one's body. The death charge. The buffalo shuddered from the impact of the masked man's silver bullets. For an instant he stood motionless, and then fell. Cruelly battered and bruised, the white stallion lay quietly, but his soft eyes watched every move as the lone ranger bathed his wounds and wiped the dust from his delicate nostrils with a damp cloth. For a long time he rested, and then he scrambled to his feet. <laughs> Get the rope, Ranger. He's up. I... I can't. Rope him, or he will flee. Let him go, then. I like that horse more than anything in the world. He deserves his freedom. He just fought for it. He... stopped. Look at him. God, he's beautiful. Look how white he is, even after all this. My horse, white. That silver horse. <laughs> silver. That'd be the name for him, yeah. Hey, Silver! Tonto. Tonto, do you see this? He he's coming towards us. Hmm. Silver? You don't know how much we need you. Okay, Tonto. Hand me the halter. I think he does know. He let you clip it on. Now the saddle. A horse like that should take a saddle. It's never a horse like this. As the mighty stallion felt the pressure of the saddle on his powerful back, he trembled as if from a chill. Every instinct told him he must flee at once to preserve his freedom. Yet he stood his ground submitting to the things done by the man that had saved his life. It wasn't gratitude that kept him there. It was something stronger, some mysterious bond of friendship and understanding. He heard the man's low voice and liked it. Silver, we're going to be partners now. I'm getting on you now, Silver. Don't be afraid. Steady now. Now, there we go. We will be magnificent together, Silver. Are you ready? I am not going to be replaced by horse. Never, Tonto. The three of us are going after Cavendish. Hi-ho, Silver! <laughs> Fuck. 
four of us. Hmm. Come on, white fella. You still good horse, too. The powerful white stallion had no bit to guide him. There was nothing but a halter and a saddle. But he seemed to know just what his new friend desired. He was eager to please, eager to show his strength and speed. His flowing mane and tail streamed out like banners in the wind. No hooves have ever beat the plains like those thundering hooves of the great horse Silver. Presently, Cavendish came into view. There he is. Come on, Silver. The mighty stallion responded with a new burst of speed that quickly cut down the lead of the man ahead. Cavendish fired wild shots over his shoulder. Again and again he fired until his gun was empty. His horse was no match for the charging white one. Fear and panic filled the outlaw's face. He heard the hoof beats ever nearer, and then the masked man shout, I want you, Cavendish. Get away. Do you hear me? Get away. Let me be, boy. The two were side by side. The masked ranger leaned out, reaching, and then threw himself at Cavendish. On your feet, Cavendish. Get up. Okay, okay, I'm getting up, mister. You don't want to kill me. No, 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 I'm not going to kill you. I'll let the law bury you. Hangman's rope is waiting for you, butch. The masked man's mission was accomplished. He had captured the last member of the Cavendish gang. But there were other outlaws, other trails, that beckoned the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and the Great Horse Silver. The rest is history. The Lone Ranger turned the blind and light of justice on criminals in all communities, but he never forgot the promise he made to his brother. A promise to try and find the boy, Dan Reed. He fought claim jumpers, wrestlers, and smugglers. Side by side, he fought with builders of the West, the pioneers in covered wagons, the carriers of mail, the stage lines and pony riders. He became known throughout the West by his mask, the white horse Silver, and a ringing cry. Hi ho, Silver! His adventures took him to the high border country, where he fought and conquered men who sought to rob an old lady and her adopted grandson. It must have been fate that guided him there and took him to the side of that woman's deathbed, where he learned about the 14-year-old boy whom she had found as a baby, the only survivor of what many thought was a native war party attack. The ranger knew it was an outlaw ambush. She handed him a locket that had been about the baby's neck. The Lone Ranger found Dan Reed sitting on the steps of a little white house. Mind if I sit with you, Danny? No, sir. Thanks. Your grandmother was a wonderful woman. She, sir, was. Before she died, she told me all about you. About how she found you as a baby. That's right. I wasn't her real grandson. I was just adopted. My right name is Dan Reed. Yes, I know. I saw the pictures of your mother and father in that locket of yours. Dad was a ranger. A captain. Yeah. I was with him when he was killed. In fact, I'd made a promise that I'd find you. You did? Dan Reed, how would you like to ride with me? You mean travel with you all the time? That's right. Mr. Thank you, but why would you offer me this? Because, Dan, your father was my brother. I'll tell you about him and what he left you. Your father was one of the men among whom uncommon valor was a common virtue. Those men have handed down a great heritage, which you and others like you must protect and preserve. It's the heritage of every American— the right to live as free people, in a world where there is true equality of opportunity. But it is your duty to be eternally vigilant, prepared at all costs to fight those who dare challenge that ideal, and you must build. It is your duty to make of this a great nation, 
to build homes and farms and villages, mills, factories, and great cities, not for the sole fruits of your labor, but to build a tree to bear fruit for all. That some should be rich shows that others may become rich, but never hold others down from reaching such heights. Let him who is houseless not pull down the house of another, but let him who is housed labor diligently to assist him in building one of his own, thus by example assuring that his own shall be safe from violence when built. You have, for your own, a great nation, together with the will, the heart, the courage, to make it even greater. This is your heritage, Dan. This is the heritage of every American. And that is the truest lesson of the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger rides off, but unlike last time, he is not alone. Yes, we will give a sequel to these origins with the return of Butch Cavendish on August 19th. However, in two weeks, Retro Static Radio takes pleasure in once again bringing you Dragnet, starring Megan Klodnicki as Joe Friday, with The Big Cat. But if you can't wait two weeks, the next week the table read rehearsal for The Big Cat will be up on Kofi for one time and monthly supporters both. Yes, for as low as one dollar, you can listen to AJ Carey, Megan Klodnicki, and Zach Cassidy laugh way too much at deciding voices, redoing takes, or just having a time of their lives during the first read-through of any given script. The one for the origins of the Lone Ranger is already up, and hearing the crew reference the last Lone Ranger episode with Jim and Jeb sounding so similar is worth a buck. But even without financially backing us, you can support Retro Static Radio by liking, sharing, subscribing, and giving a five-star review wherever you listen. Those are the best ways to show you enjoy our productions and allow us to continue to grow. And please check out Killing 15 Minutes, a true crime quickie podcast, for some hilarity as well as learning a little bit about real-life serial killers and murderers. I'm Arthur Carey, and this concludes our broadcast day. Good night, and God bless. You're watching Retro Static Radio.